Michael Crichton's classic novel Jurassic Park talked about a world where dinosaurs were brought back to life. But this concept isn't just the plot of a sci-fi novel. At least, not if the creators of the Chickenosaur are successful. The Chickenosaur, also known as Dino Chicken or Chickenosaurus, is a pet project of famous paleontologist Jack Horner. Horner wants to recreate a small dinosaur. To do this, Horner and his team are reactivating and engineering ancient DNA found in chickens, hence the name Chickenosaur. Before we talk about the Chickenosaur, let's introduce Dr. Jack Horner. Horner is one of the most famous paleontologists in the world. He was the scientific advisor on the Jurassic Park film franchise and was likely the inspiration for the main character, Alan Grant. This link with Jurassic Park is not surprising, because the story we're about to tell has many parallels with the content of these films. Originally, Horner and his team looked for the remnants of DNA in dinosaur fossils, undertaking a huge dig at Hell Creek in Montana. Just like in Jurassic Park, Jack Horner was hoping this would be the first step to recreating a dinosaur. The team found lots of great scientific breakthroughs during this time, including T-Rex blood vessels, but unfortunately no dinosaur DNA. Jack Horner would need to try a different tactic if he wanted his pet dinosaur. The first discussions about the plot of Jurassic World, which eventually became the 2015 reboot of the franchise, inspired Horner to go in a different direction. Jack Horner introduced his new method to recreate a small dinosaur in his book, How to Build a Dinosaur, written in 2009. Horner worked with a colleague, Hans Larsen, who was trying to understand how birds lost their tails and transformed their hands into wings. It was a light bulb moment for Jack Horner. If we can figure out how birds lost these features, why can't we reverse it? The making of the Chickenosaur is not just an interesting and ambitious project. Through this work, Horner hopes to answer key questions about evolution. Way back in 1870, Thomas Henry Huxley, an English biologist, first suggested that dinosaurs were descended from birds. He saw little difference between the bone structure of the Compsognathus, a turkey-sized dinosaur, and the Archaeopteryx, the earliest known bird discovered in Germany. This theory was debated for years, until in 1996, a Chinese farmer, Li Yingfang, discovered the Sinosauropteryx, whilst he was digging holes to plant trees. This was one of the greatest fossil finds of all time. Because it was so well preserved, paleontologists could see that the Sinosauropteryx skeleton had a long tail, a bird-like skull, and evidence of feathers. Since then, more evidence has been found that many dinosaurs had feathers, including the largest winged dinosaur ever found, a prehistoric raptor described as the fluffy feathered poodle from hell. Now, birds are classified as dinosaurs by some paleontologists. To be more precise, dinosaurs are classified as non-avian dinosaurs, whilst modern birds are classified as avian dinosaurs. So, it makes sense to use birds in this project. But why chickens? Why not choose a bird more similar in structure to dinosaurs? Well, chickens are cheap. Secondly, chickens are domesticated. They're much easier to work with than an ostrich, for example. Finally, there have been loads of research into chicken genes and anatomy. Because of their importance to the economy, lots of time and money has been dedicated to studying chickens. There are even entire departments at universities dedicated to poultry science. It's worth noting that Jack Horner also kept a chicken skeleton close to hand whenever he worked. Chicken skeletons look like miniature dinosaurs, and this skeleton inspired Horner. He said, Sometimes I look at it, and turn it, and think, If I could just grow these bones a little different, tilt this one way and that another, I'd have a dinosaur. So you've got your chickens, what's the next step? 
Jack Horner has broken down the process of creating a chickenosaur into four steps. Give it teeth. Create a long tail. Turn the wings back to arms and hands. Change the beak into a snout. A lot of the process focuses on something called atavism activation. Atavism means ancestral characteristics, something a line of creatures used to have, but phased out as they evolved. Researchers hope to activate these dormant genes. Sorry, but we'll never make a dinosaur from a mosquito preserved in amber. DNA degrades over time, and although in good conditions it could last a few million years, dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 66 million years ago. The chickenosaur is an effective way of recreating the dinosaur, because dinosaur DNA has survived by replicating itself. That is, evolving over millions of years to be the birds we see today. Genomes, a complete set of genes, don't evolve in a neat fashion. Old genes aren't always discarded. They may have just been sidelined, ready to be manipulated and reawakened by geneticists. Essentially, the project aims to turn off genes that cause bird-like characteristics. This opens up a lot of questions, like what potential genes lie in other animals or in humans. You might think that recreating a dinosaur would be very expensive. You might think that the scientists working on the project will have spared no expense, to quote the famous line from Jurassic Park's John Hammond. The project has by no means been cheap, but you might be surprised at how much the estimated costs are. Funding started for the project in 2011. A large portion of the funding has come from a well-known source George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. It's unknown how much Lucas has funded, but given that Jack Horner's GoFundMe is only asking for $300,000, and is currently sitting at 9316 we can imagine it was a significant chunk of funding. In terms of remaining costs, in 2014, Jack Horner stated, I'd be really surprised if we don't have chickenosaurs in 10 years we wouldn't need more than $5 million. If we did have $5 million, then we would have three different labs working on it. For context, the budget of Jurassic Park was $63 million. So recreating a dinosaur may be cheaper than creating dinosaurs out of CGI and puppets. The whole process has taken years so far. Jack Horner hasn't let this break his enthusiasm. If anything, he thinks this is a great chance to teach the general public about evolutionary biology. Let's have a look at how much progress has been made in the four steps Horner mentioned earlier. Give it teeth, change the beak into a snout, turn the wings back into arms and hands, and create a long tail. Modern birds don't have teeth. However, Matthew Harris at the University of Wisconsin has figured out how to stimulate the gene for teeth in chickens. This gene can be turned on to produce chickens with teeth. In 2015, researchers successfully modified the beak of a chicken embryo to resemble a dinosaur-like snout. This took seven years of work. Researchers looked at how the beaks of chickens and emus developed then studied how snouts developed in turtles, alligators, and lizards. At this moment, Jack Horner proudly announced that they were 50% there with the project. According to Horner, making the arms and hands is the easy part. Chicken wings have the same bones as the arm of a small dinosaur, so the necessary parts are already there. Hands could be developed too. When birds are developing as embryos, they have a hand with three fingers, similar to a velociraptor claw. A gene then turns on as the bird develops to fuse these three bones together. If this gene was stopped, the chicken would come out with hands. 
Unfortunately, the tail is a big challenge in making the Chickenosaurus. Modern birds don't have a tail. Instead, they have something called a pygostyle, a bony structure that allows birds to control their tail feathers. The tail is the current focus of the dino chicken team. After the project temporarily shut down in April 2020 due to the global pandemic, the last GoFundMe update in May 2020 shows that the research into avian tails continues. This research being conducted is bringing new discoveries to science with every step. Whilst there have been plenty of people who have been excited about the concept of a chickenosaurus, not everyone in the scientific community is thrilled. Matthew Harris stated that technically you're going to have a messed up chicken. It's not a dinosaur. It's never going to be a dinosaur. It's just going to be a really awful monstrosity. Some people have been horrified by Jack Horner's work, accusing him of playing God. It's an argument that has another parallel with Jurassic Park, where Ian Malcolm chastises John Hammond, exclaiming, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they never stopped to think if they should. Jack Horner is still positive about the work. He stated, we've got all sorts of genetically modified animals already just from breeding. We could make a dino chicken. We could make a glow-in-the-dark unicorn. Basically, we can make anything we want, I think, once we understand the genes. If you want to support Horner's work, you can donate to his GoFundMe. What do you think about the Chickenosaurus? Would you own one as a pet? Thank you for watching Dinosaur Discovery. We will be back here next week looking at the wonderful world of our prehistoric past.